Hi, this is Steve, also known as your friendly neighborhood man in magenta wig. Um, I'm just going to do another sort of freewheeling uh, video this time. You know, I have nothing planned out, nothing in particular I want to talk about. Uh, just going to let this roll, see where it goes. Um, you know, however long it, it goes on, it goes on. Um, yeah, kind of a chill day today. Um, I woke up super, super late because last night was a rocky night. I, I was supposed to go to the flea market with my family this morning, and I just, you know... I just called them and said, I can't do it. I've been sleeping for like four hours, so, yeah. But, yeah, um, woke up late, kind of went for a drive because I had nothing else important to do today. But, man, this this was not an easy an easy sleeping night. I I had a dream that really, really bothered me, but I, I don't, I'm not quite sure. I, I keep kind of restarting this video. Like, I, I keep you know, starting this video filming, and then I get into the dream, and I'm like, I, I don't know if I want to get into, I, I don't know if I want to go into all that, you know, I don't know if people want to hear about that, but, yeah, it, maybe I'll, maybe I'll talk about it a little later. I did, ha I did have another weird thing that I dreamt about, though, where, um, I was in some, I was in some unfamiliar town, uh, I, I'm not sure what for, I think it was something having to do with school or something, you know, I was in college or something, and, um, I, I was in town for this, this one, like, college-related event, uh, wherever this was supposed to be, and I, I was looking for a really inexpensive hotel to stay in. Here's one of the disadvantages of being, uh, bald. That's gonna glare off my head the entire time, isn't it? Oh, well. Anyway, so, um... Yeah, so I, I wanted a really inexpensive hotel, um, and I found uh, in this dream, I, I, was, I was sort of driving around looking for anything, you know, seeing, you know, if I found a hotel, I would stop at it and see, you know, check it out. And I, I, I think I, I dreamed the ultimate uh, hotel from hell, um, and I know someone's going to ask, Boy, are you going to make a Duke Nukem level to illustrate this? And no. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, I, I went into this little hotel, it had, like, a normal little, like, normal little small, um, you know, lobby area where you, you checked into the desk and stuff, and, um, I asked for a room, it was, like, 60 bucks or something, so I got a room, and they said, you know, I was on floor five, so to get up, to get to the room, you know, I had to go outside of the building, and into this little, like, metal, sort of like this metal tunnel, like, very rusty, you know, pipes and stuff. Uh, it's, it's really hard to describe. It almost, it almost looks like something you would see in, like, a farm, you know, like a, I, I, I don't know, it's really, really hard to describe, like, painted white, but very, like, corroded and rusty and metal and stuff, and so I walked down this, this rusty metal tunnel, and there was, like, there weren't normal elevators. There were like these like lifts that took you up to whatever floor. Um, like this, this was like totally like a totally separate thing from the building where the lobby was, where these rooms supposedly were. Um, so I I got on one of these like clanky metal elevators and I I pressed the button and it took me up to the fifth floor. And um, the one the first thing that was odd was that there was no electricity. Um, it, there was no electricity at all in this place, and instead of, um, instead of hotel rooms, it, it's, this is gonna be so weird to describe, because I, I want to get, like, the image across, but I, I don't know how I can do it. Um, so, I, I go in, and it's like a line of, like, um, like, stall, like, metal stalls you would find in, like, a barn. Like, if you walk through, like, a like a horse barn or something, you know, there's just one stall after another. And those were apparently the hotel rooms, you know, they they were open on the top, you know, there was no privacy, they weren't, you know, there was just like a little wall separating all of them, and you could just look down into any of them. Um, and so I got to, I got to um, my supposed hotel room, this little rusty metal stall, um, and all it was, I looked down into it, and all it was was a little bench. It 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 almost looked like, it almost reminded me, and I I think I said this in in a dream, t in the dream too. 
Um, it, it almost reminded me if you put like a jail cell in like a like a horse barn. Um, you look down into it, and there was just like this little bed. It, it wasn't even it wasn't even a really a bed. It was like a little metal or a like little metal bench that was you know part of the wall. It kind of jutted out from the wall. I don't I don't even think it was. I don't remember it being like big enough that you could like lay on it or anything. You know, it was just like this plain little bench and this really grody, overflowing toilet, like, in the middle of the stall. And that was the hotel room. <laughs> so I, um, I, I don't know where my brain pulls these things from, but... So I, um, I went back down to the, to the lobby area, and I said I... Because I, I had already paid for some reason. I'm like, well, I, I demand my money back. You know, this is this is abominable. And the guy behind the, the desk is, you know, throwing a fit at me. Like, oh, you know, we do good work here. I, I do my best to keep those clean. And, you know, how dare you, you know, insult our service. And, yeah, really, really strange. So... <laughs> I, I used to keep a, if I don't know where it is now, but I used to keep a dream journal uh, years and years ago. I, I was, sometime in my teens, I, I used to keep a dream journal. And all the dreams were just really messed up like that, like very vivid, uh, vivid, very vivid, very detailed, but it's just, it was just like, where's my brain pulling these ideas from, you know? Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Of course, you know, when I went out driving today, I ended up at a mall about 45 minutes from here, and I did find they still sold the Rocky Pop figurines. I didn't find Columbia. Um, I'm still looking for Columbia. Um, but yeah, I did find the baby Wolf Wolf. Um, so, speaking of... Um, even though I was, I was going to retire her, um, when I was driving to work one day, now that that's over with, I was driving to work one day this past week, and, um, I, I suddenly got an idea for another video of her. So I'd, I'd like to do that sometime in the near future. Um, yeah, it was, retiring the baby Magenta was, was kind of a... Uh, it's, it's retired until I can think of a, a decent idea, and I, I think this one will be, um, because the last video was just not, not very good. Like, of, of all the, of all the videos I posted on this channel, like, I think, um, the baby, the baby magenta is cranky, uh, is one of the very few I'm, I'm legitimately ashamed of because it could have been a lot better. Um, it was, it was very... Just very rushed. Like I, I, I rushed to get it done before I moved out of my first house. Like that was like the, the last night I was there. So, but yeah, um, did I already talk about that in another video? I can't remember. I'm getting serious deja vu right now. But anyway, if I did, I'm sorry. I'm being repetitive. But yes, there will be another baby magenta sometime in the near future because I have a funny idea. Um, what else? Uh, I decided this time, instead of sitting in the living room on my chair, uh, I'm just going to sit next to my records and just, you know, pull out whatever grabs my attention. <laughs> so, um, oh, here's something uh, that I, I found in the dollar bin of a, um, a half price books a while back. And I, I had heard about this, but I'd never actually seen a copy. Uh, Patrick Skye's Songs That Made America Famous, which is... Um, one of the, like, purposely one of the most offensive albums ever released. Like, every song on this has just something that will piss somebody off. And, of course, that's why I bought it, because I just love stuff, <laughs> love stuff like that. Uh, speaking of something that pissed people off, but not for the, you know, not intentionally, Frank Sinatra's trilogy, which, you know, the, the first two, the first two records in this, um, the first LP is, like, standards. The, it's, it's the past record, uh, the middle album is, uh, Present, where he does, like, more modern, like, 60s and 70s pop songs. And then there's the Future album, which is what people have the most problem with, because it's a concept album about, um, if, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I heard this, I think it's a concept album about Frank Sinatra traveling through space, um, trying to hide from the mob on Uranus. 
and yes, that like that planet, that planet specifically. Um, so yeah, not really sure what he was thinking there. <laughs> I think that was this was one of his like sort of later in life sort of albums. I have some Ray Ray Stevens in here too. Ray Stevens is kind of confusing because like people people know him for like funny songs like The Streak and stuff, but he actually does like every now and then I come I come across one of his albums where I think this is one of them. Be your own best friend where he he'll do like serious ballads and stuff. You know. Sometimes it's like more, you know, religiously inclined, but it's it's not funny stuff. It's you know, it's it's serious music, and it's it's just odd to you know, it's the same guy that gave us well, the streak, but <laughs> um, which is which is really misleading. Um, this album, which has a great um, cover, parodying. Uh, if I can do this without knocking down my drink, um, this is a great al uh, album cover parodying. Uh, Barry Manilow's trying to get the feeling, um, but in it, I have a feeling they they did this they did this cover. I mean, they even do the back cover too, um, just because the first song on it, um, "I Need Your Help, Barry Manilow," is funny, but then the rest of the album is not. <laughs> so, you know, I I didn't know what to think. Like playing this, I'm like, well, is, is are the rest of the songs supposed to be like a takeoff of Barry Manilow too? And no. Oh, it's just, yeah, just very odd, very odd, kind of misleading in a way, because it looks like it would be one of his comedy albums, but it really isn't. <sighs> <clears throat> oh, what else do we got over here? Oh, God. Every time I hear this album, it just frustrates me, because I hate that it exists. Um, this is The Beat Goes On by Vanilla Fudge, which um, almost killed their success almost instantly. Uh, this was their second album, and it's... I, I I hadn't heard any of Vanilla Fudge, you know, all my life, and I, I found out about this album because it was on a list of the absolute worst concept albums of all time, and God, does it deserve it. Um, they, it's, it's basically, um, they, they try to tell, like, the history of music by doing really god-awful covers of things, and, like, stuff you wouldn't want to hear a psychedelic band attempt, like, you know, the 12th Street Rag, or Hound Dog, or... Though, I have to say, they do they do a Beethoven medley, which is surprisingly really, really good, but that's, like, the only thing worthwhile on this album. And it, it's, it's called The Beat Goes On because they, they cover the Sonny Bono uh, song, The Beat Goes On, about... 25,000 times over the course of this album. Like, every other song on this is a variant of The Beat Goes On. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what they were going for. But, yeah, it, uh... They bounce back from it. Like, they, they hurried up and recorded, like, a normal album really quickly. But, you know, thank God for that, because this, this album is just... It's, it's, it's terrible. Um, hmm... Some of the stuff you may have seen, I, I, I can't remember my um, Bag of Music swag videos, because those were, I haven't done one of those in an awful long time. See, that, that's another thing, like, I, um, I've started series like Ask Me in a Magenta Wig and stuff that I never followed up on, and I want to go back and remedy that finally. Because, like, my, um, my Music Secrets thing, like, I, I had all these other ideas for that, and then I just never did it, so. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, speaking of, you know, Umaguma, I was actually listening to in the car today, um, but not uh, as the original album was. <coughs> I, I re-burned it because um, there was a cassette version, I can't remember where, like, there, there are different cassette versions of that album. Uh, one of them, like, cuts off all but, like, one of the live tracks and stuff, but one of them, I think from England, uh, completely reconfigures the track list so that the it, it, it includes everything that was on the original album, but it 
there it alternates like studio track live track studio track live track and for some reason like the album just feels a lot more coherent that way like there's not this divide between like oh really really cool live album and then like a subpar studio album it's like no this time they're they're kind of juxtaposed together and they kind of have an odd flow to them like they make sense when you hear like well this is what they were doing in the studio at the time and then here's them doing that kind of strange thing live you know that kind of makes it makes a lot more sense sounds a lot more coherent than the album that um divided you know as you know, it actually is live songs on one LP and the studio songs on the other. <sighs> well, I could pull out this Richard Pryor album, but I, <laughs> I think showing that on camera might piss some people off, so I'm not going to do that. But yes, eh, have some, have a few Richard Pryor albums on here that I just never got around to playing. Eh. Not the biggest fan of the guy, but you know, it's nice to have nice to have some stand up stuff. Do, 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 do. Bert and Ernie Bros, come on. We know what you're laying down, guys. It's it's okay. I mean we accept you. Oh, this is the. I don't. I don't even know if I can. <laughs> I don't even know if I can. I'm just gonna have to hold my hand over. I I found this in a, a dollar bin uh, once at the exchange. Um, it's it's like some weird like record. It's it's a like a porn parody of Shaft, which is, is literally like people making extremely over exaggerated sex noises, and um it's. The crazy thing about it, though, is um, I, I paid a dollar for that, and then I realized that record is worth a ton of money. Probably not in that shape, because I think I had to, like, tape the the cover back together and stuff, but it's worth, like, hundreds of dollars because there was only, like, a handful of them made, so, yeah. Odd what people shell out money for, but, yeah. Apparently that one's... Apparently that's... Some, that's, uh, pretty rare. <sighs> Yeah, I got the village people. Never able to complete that set, though. Um, because I realized, at least in America, I mean, I could probably, like, if I cared that much, I could probably get their other albums off Discogs or something. Um, as far as their records go, um, the soundtrack to their crappy movie is about as far as you can find in America. Um, like, their albums after this, I don't even think came out over here because people just were not interested and if you've ever seen this movie it's it's kind of obvious why this this was just not not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination well no i i lied there's one album that's sort of easy to find their weird new wave attempt <laughs> Which I, I found, I think, in like a, the discount bin of a record store in Chicago or something is the only, you know, the only one of these I've really come across. But, yeah. Which is, this album is mostly known for two things. One, the cover is absolutely absurd for a Village People album. And two, the song Food Fight is like an actually good piece of like early 80s punk. Which is mind-blowing enough coming from them. Uh, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. Okay, let's... See, here's something, you know, especially now since they've, like, they've gone back and done, like, the expanded Rocky Horror soundtrack and stuff where they put, you know, all the songs on. Talk about an album that really could do with an expanded version, um, because there's, there's so much missing from this. Um, excuse me. Um, do I still have the 45s tucked in here? I used to keep everything together, but if if you find the um if you find the 45s from this, uh, the B sides were actually um, songs that were cut from the soundtrack album. I mean, they're in the movie, but you know, I mean, it's it could be worse. I mean, it could be, you know, it could be this, or 
they padded the... Is there something on his... Yeah. Oh, yeah, the price sticker is on his eye. Where they, they padded it out to two LPs with songs that aren't even in the movie at all. And um, the soundtrack to Hair is even worse in that regard, because I feel like half of that album is not even on the... It's not even in the movie. Um, and I... I mean, the sound... Yeah, the soundtrack to the movie, not the stage version, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what's going on on these shelves. Uh, I'm not going to bother putting these back right now. <sighs> so... Some people have actually asked me, um, would you ever do, like, a... Since the election's going on and stuff, would you ever do, like, a Man of Magenta Wake video related to that? And my... My strong answer, both um, in terms of videos as myself and Man of Magenta Wig, is a no, um, because um, I I try to make. See, I I used to be a I used to be a person that really loved just offending people, just getting a rise out of people, and especially like with Rocky callbacks and stuff. And I'm just not that person anymore. I I hate offending people now, and I know that um, you know, especially now. Um, no matter what you say about politics, it's going to piss somebody off, and sometimes to a ridiculously over-the-top degree. Um, and I just don't feel like doing that. I don't want I don't want Man of Magenta Wig, especially, to get into a, a you know some sort of controversy like that. Um, because I I try to keep. I mean, I've I've done a couple more blue videos, but um, like the Homer Simpson thing. But, like, I, I just try to keep Man of Magenta Wig relatively um, inoffensive. Um, which is why, like, um, one, of, one of my videos, I, I mentioned wanting to do, like, this particularly p controversial podcast, uh, which I, I can say now, because I, I never did it. Um, it. It was about why I, um, why I backed out of the fandom after a short time of a particular TV show, because I started to see a lot of sides of the fandom that I just really didn't want anything to do with, and um, I think I would have, I would have, to make my point in that, I would have had to have gotten into way too many really disgusting things, and it, so I was like, I, I don't want to do this, you know, especially because back then, you know, obviously I was doing the Magenta Wig for everything, and I'm like, I don't want man a Magenta Wig talking about nasty shit, you know. As myself, maybe, I mean, if, if people really want to hear, <laughs> people want to really, you know, if people want me to launch on why um, I got out of a fan base that was just getting really out of control with disgusting shit, I mean, maybe I can do it, but yeah, 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 but I just, I try to keep these videos relatively inoffensive. Ah! Oh. I have a poster for the Rocky remake up there, which is going to be on in just a few days now, sometime this week, I believe. Really looking forward to it, looking at it positively, because I know the premiere of it went well. So, you know, a lot of people who were worried about it, you know, really enjoyed it, so. All right, you know what, before I go, I might as well talk about that dream, because it's just, it's been eating at me all day, so. And if I ever do repeat myself in these things, because I don't always remember what I did in, like, the 80-something videos that came before, um, just tell me. Just, just say, we heard that before, and I'll never bring it up again. But anyway, back on back on track. So, um, yeah, I've, I've had dreams like this a couple times in my life, and they're just never, you know, they're, they're never pleasant to have, because when you wake up and realize... Uh, what the reality of the situation is, uh, you, you don't really know. Um, you don't really know how to respond to it because you you've gone through all these emotions because of the dream, like during the dream, and now you have to. I thought I had to burp again. Not at this inopportune time. I'm getting into something emotional here. I don't need burps. Burps spoiling this, but. Um, yeah, you go through all these emotions in in the dream, and then you wake up, and your body has to realize, like, well, all those emotions were for nothing because this is here's the reality of the situation. And um, in in the case uh, last night, I had a dream where it's a really long, elaborate dream too, 
um, you know, it just, just went on and on, uh, where, um, I, in this dream, was, was in a relationship with someone who, in real life, um, I never had a chance with, uh, you know, had, had always turned me down, had just, you know, and it, it was weird, because this dream kind of came out of nowhere, and it's like, well, why are you confronting me with this person now, why, why does this matter now, but, you know, that's, that's, that's in the past, uh, but it was, in, in this dream, it was like, suddenly, I, I was dating this person who in real life had just, you know, hand waved me and said, there's no way in hell that's going to happen, and, um, and obviously, you know, in the dream, it was, you know, it was a real joyous feeling, because it's like, oh my god, I don't understand this, you know, I, I didn't realize it was a dream, but even then I was like, I don't understand this. Why am I in a relationship with this person who hated me? You know? <laughs> but, um, but, like, it was literally, like, the dream literally had me, like, holding them and them telling me, like, oh, you know, I, I always think about you, but I never knew how to express it. You know, I, I, mean, I let you believe I hated you, but I really don't and stuff. And, and um, then I woke up. And it was like, oh, you know, that, that was a dream. You, um, you still have no chance of ever being with them. Um, so a lot of the day uh, was just, a lot of the day was just coping with that because it's still something that affects me greatly. And um, that's one of the reasons why I decided to go for a drive. Because I'm like, if I, you know, I'm going to go crazy if I just sit around, like, mulling over that all day. So yeah, I you know I that, that that happens. It's just you know that's that's happened in regards to a few different people over the course of my life where I had a dream where suddenly things were okay with them and then I woke up and they weren't. But you know I I realized that um, I realized that people have dreams like that. You know there's there's probably people watching this can that can relate to it, and it's never easy because you know how do you respond to that? You know your your body thinks that all of this is actually happening, so, you know, you, you feel the emotions of, like, oh, I finally get to just hold them, and everything is perfect, and then it's like, bam, nope, gone, you know, so, in this case, it was literally, like, like, my body realized, you need to wake up and go to the bathroom, you have to go to the bathroom really bad, and suddenly my, you know, all the joy was over, um, yeah, I just, I hate dreams like that. It's, it's, it's like a cruel joke that your mind plays on you, because it's like, well, here's a fleeting glimpse of how happy you would have been with them, you know? And then we're going to just take it away, you know, but, eh. So there's that. Is there anything else I want to talk about? I, I don't know how long this video's gone on, but, eh, da, 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 da. I still never completed my Herb Alpert collection. I think I'm like one album short or something now. Yeah. I have everything from the beginning of the Tijuana Brass to like the early 90s when he stopped putting out... stopped putting out albums on vinyl, but I think I'm like one short. I'm gonna have to go back and remedy that at some point. Anything else up here I can talk about? Oh, let's see. Oh, this album's gonna be relevant soon. Getting towards Thanksgiving again. Time to turn on the radio and see if any of the stations are playing the Mass Cree in three-part harmony. With the circles and arrows and the... etc. <laughs> Just found this album. Um, the Isley Brothers and Jimi Hendrix. I think this is one of like the gray market Jimi Hendrix ones. It actually is worth its salt. Like He actually is on this. You know, because there, there's so many albums that, that are like, oh, Jimmy's early years, and then he's not even on the album. Um, like, well, I can show you one of them. Shit, where is it? I, oh, here it is. Okay. This is Jimi Hendrix's album, well, quote-unquote Jimi Hendrix's album, Moods, uh, which... Uh, they pushed as, like, oh, like, early recordings, like, he did of, like, guitar instrumentals and stuff, and unfortunately, Jimmy's not on this album at all. This is just absolute 100% bullshit, um, and I think his family actually sued because 
you know, he's he's literally like the only person even credited on this album, and he's not on a single song. So, and they, I mean, they ran that scam multiple times because I've come across this album under different names too, and it's just like, yeah, well, you can keep putting out, and he's still not going to be on it, you know. But, yeah. all right, I'm I'm going on and on. You might be getting bored now. I'm getting bored. I'd fall asleep. All right, so. Hope you enjoyed this, these few moments of quality time with me, just shooting the shit, just borrow a stage, uh, borrow, borrow a stage, borrow a saying from Kevin Smith. I don't know where stage came from. Apparently I am tired. Uh, yeah, shooting the shit to borrow a saying from Kevin Smith. Uh, I am Steve, uh, also known as your friendly neighborhood man in magenta wig. I have more videos to come, and until then, bye!